Good morning and welcome back to the studio. Last week we did some thumbnails to discover how we are going to work on our sunflower projects. It's only going to be one project though. Um, I drew out my sunflowers on an 8 by 8 inch Etcher Lab watercolor pad. <laughs> That's a mouthful. And I included the designs in the background and the sunflowers we worked on last week. I'll pop a little piece of the thumbnails back into the video just to refresh your memory. You can catch that video on my YouTube playlist for Meet Me in the Studio. Anyway, so I discovered that I wanted the sunflowers to stand out from the background and I'm going to make the sunflowers lighter and the background slightly darker. To do that, I'll invite you over to the working area where we will work with the watercolour palette. Okay, here is the watercolour block, my put together limited palette watercolour. I've got some ochres, three or four variants, a couple of browns, a turquoise, indigo, like a limey green, cadmium red, alizarum, alizarum crimson, <laughs> lemon yellow, a pink, June brilliant is that one's name, um, a warmer brown and then black as well. I'm not going to use all of those colors but I might dip into them so that I can adjust other colors. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow on the flowers just because my sunflowers are going to be yellow of course and it's almost an even mix of yellow with water no uh, saturated part here it's really really pale and some limey green i just want to clean off that little cake there it looks better already and bring in see how much that still looks like the lemon yellow all right that looks more like a green and all i did was take that exact same lime green and dab a little bit of my blues into that yellow So I'm painting happy sunflowers, which means they need happier colors. And with happier colors, obviously comes some brighter tones. not as muted and dark as some of my other projects but still very enjoyable now I like to bring in a little bit of variance into this leaf and as you can see it's already a little bit darker and cooler over there and somewhat warmer and brighter on the tip and again, going into a more muted blue at the bottom because the sun is coming from the top and we'll have more shadowy areas around this end here. I took a little bit of the indigo 
and I'm just working that wet into wet into this leafy area. It's wonderful what you can learn by playing with your thumbnails as to how you want to manipulate those colors to start off with. Again, some lighter greens for the top part of the leaf that's catching that sun and slightly cooler and darker around the bottom edge. Now I didn't do that with this one because that one's going to be sort of understated. The same goes for these fern-like leaves in the background. I'll have them a really really pale almost grayish green and I'll show you what I mean. So I mixed up a lot of indigo, a little bit of that green and to gray it down I am using some of the cadmium red. Now this is going to give me a warm gray green if I mixed it with this one which I'm going to add anyway. See how the color changes? So, I'll show it to you on a little test swatch. I normally have cut offs from previous projects that I either didn't like or projects that didn't turn out very well. So let me show you how that happened. So this was our end result from all that mixing. So let's start again. Some of the limey green, some of the indigo, just to get it slightly darker. Then I put in some of the cadmium red. So let me show you what the cadmium red did. It gave you a muted green. So maybe you're wondering what that and that looks like. Well, it is brighter. It's not as muted. You can, you can even make it darker. But it's not muted. Can you see that? All right. And what if we mixed in that as well? So of course we are going to get to that color. Now every time you make that mix, you'll have a different variant of that color. Okay, so if you know you're going to need a lot of the same color, then mix it up ahead of time. So I know I want all these ferns to be this muted green. So I am going to mix up a juicy puddle of that color and play with it until it looks right before I commit to paper. Hence the little test swatch. So you can adjust and adapt your colors until you have the exact version of the grayish green that you want. And remember, you don't have to have a pure mix. See how it turned green there or brown because it didn't have enough of the blue and yellowy green in? Well, this way you can adjust and mute when I put it on there, I can see that it's too dark, meaning it's too saturated. There, you just add more water, because watercolors work really well, believe it or not, if you use them with water. <laughs> there we go. So it is going to turn out lighter than the original sample, which is exactly what I wanted. 
a lighter shade of that greenish gray all right I'll put that down there for a second and I'll start off with filling in those shapes so this is just the preliminary layer and by that I mean I'm definitely going to add more layers to this piece for now I am showing you part of my process and how I go about to get to the choices that I make during a project so I'm going to put some music on for you and you can just watch me fill in these until we are ready to add more details to our sunflowers
All right. So we are just about ready to work on the sunflowers and the details. And for that, I am going to make new mixtures. I'll be making a little bit more of a warmer, darker sunflower color. And for that, I'm going to use the lemon yellow again. Add in some of that warm ochre color. And then also have a puddle of the yellow ochre on its own and a third puddle of the yellow ochre mixed in with one of the browns. I wanted that little bit of extra deep color in there. And then of course I'm going to use a coolish blue grey maybe a brown gray let's add the brown to that see this is the color for the center of my sunflower i like that and i'm not going to dunk this color in there completely i'm going to wet that area and use a wet in wet technique so simply grab some of that and fill it into the area by dotting the point onto the page. I'm making seed pod marks with my brush and then going around the sunflower edge at the bottom parts. Right, now I can start dunking in darker versions of that because watercolor always dries slightly lighter I like to get a head start with the darks and push it a little bit while that settles in and some of that water evaporates I am going to work on this sunflower here so I want the tips to reach out to the sky and grab the lighter color so i'll add some light to those tips and i'm doing this roughly because i'm not doing a botanical study i like to put some character into my petals and my flowers and with the second warm yellow i'm simply following the line of each of those petals and putting them into the base just like that now i have no interest in creating lifelike pictures at all if i wanted to do that i would grab some photos and put that in a frame so that's dry enough for me now to start adding the lighter colors on the edge that will hit the sun from above of course and start to sculpt now here that light will hit the tops of the sunflower and I'll have to mention this to you I hardly ever work off of reference unless I'm out in nature doing a plain air painting and even then, I do have the tendency to follow my own mind and be a little bit more creative by suggesting what I see instead of copying what I see. All right, so going into that darker version, just grab some of the paint while you're working from your wet areas. And follow the curve of each of the petals as you move towards the center right and for the very darkest color go into the dark that we started there for the center and just guide your brush into the yellow don't paint into the yellow just guide it there 
and it's better to work from wet into dry areas otherwise you have like a place where the paint stops and it makes a blob with a clean slightly dried off damp brush I'm simply going to redefine my petals so that I have more movement on them and here and there I'll add a little bit of paint again but I only did it on that one okay now I wanted these tips to especially the ones facing the bottom to have a little more color and I'll be dunking in the dark at the very tip as well sort of to give flesh out and give shape to the petal I'm going to give that a couple of minutes to dry With the work really dry, I want to go in with my eraser quickly and just make sure that I caught all of the pencil marks that I don't want. Sometimes our watercolor allows us to erase pencil marks without disturbing the surface, especially with your paper. The watercolor will lift off when you erase on top of already painted areas okay that looks good now I'm not erasing because I don't like the pencil marks I'm simply erasing because there's too much of it you know and by playing it down a little bit it seems like I have a clearer vision to follow. Okay, I'm going to focus on the sunflower seed pots now by only doing two things. With my broken with my broken watercolor brush, I'll quickly point out what we're going to do. So to keep those seed pod heads looking light I'm going to fill in the background leaves or petals with a darker shade of color and then in the foreground I want to paint in seed pods with a darker color so let me show you I'll mix up a little bit of the darker version this time using some of our cool gray that we used earlier and carving out some of those seeds pods with the wet paint making marks where some of the other ones would be all right and then rinsing the color off dampening off the brush and blending those out into the petals now this does two things it softens that hard edge and it also helps to bring in newfound direction for those petals to move into okay I'm going to add a little extra of the ochre in there simply to add more marks and define the petals a little more now like I've said before this is not a botanical study these are fun little sunflowers and I'll use that same dark to create some of the seed heads for the front part this time not going into the petals again what I do want to do see if I can loosen up some of that paint with a little bit of water on my brush and then with my paper towel just blotting that up 
and still in keeping with the direction try and carve out some light areas for those petals so you'll see we don't only add what we need we sometimes take away what we need there we go and this one especially I want to blend out a little bit more and make sure there's not a lot of that dark left that one also turned out a little bit too dark and we can just keep on working it until we have lifted off some of that color so it's nice when you have good quality paper and you can go back in and adjust what you needed and of course it wouldn't be complete if I didn't put in the darkest darks yet and for that I'll follow the petal shapes here and work around those parts that I just did to create the illusion that my flower petals have shadowy sides and while that top part is still somewhat damp we can pop in some colors and with the damp point blend them out as well all in the name of creating illusions of depth and this will dry lighter of course so never be afraid to experiment with your darker colors on your watercolor just be weary of two things one don't overwork and two don't fiddle which is exactly the same as don't overwork <laughs> so often I see people just hacking at their watercolors instead of leaving it alone and letting the paint do what it was supposed to do and that is flow where it needs to flow so you can guide your paint with water and show it where to go or you can mess up your piece by overworking it all right a little bit of a light yellow mix for this bottom sunflower as I just want those petals to be a little more defined all right next up I'm going to take darker green versions to add some character to my leaves so just a little bit of detail goes a long way and we don't want to do too much I'm simply adding soft veins in a medium dark tone to create movement in my leaf after all our sunflowers are our focal point in this project and the details help us to define that as something important to look at our eyes go there because there are things like contrast and color variation and detail those things all add up to creating a place for the eye to move towards to go and see what hidden gems can be found what is there to look at
All right, guys. So the painting is done, and the last little bit of footage got lost somehow because my internal storage on my phone is really not enough, and my memory card is also full. So the end result came out pretty nice, although I am going to edit a few things digitally. And then I just wanted to show you that this month has really been a sunflower month. And next week I'll be showing you how I did this video. Alright then, see you next week. Bye everybody.